Thank you, Lisa. Our second guest speaker is Sharon Bergen from the WEC office. You could please. Hello, how are you? Thank you. My name is Sharon Burton, and I am the community coordinator for the North Suburban WIC program. That is a picture my daughter put up with me on Facebook, because I don't even know how to do that. And I believe that is the uh, Santa Barbara overlooking the ocean. So I was surprised to see that picture. But my husband and daughter are in that picture, but cut out. <laughs> OK, so I, as you can see, I'm not really um, technically astute for a lot of these things. But I'm going to give you a little bit about my background, which is a little different, OK? Um, first of all, I'm going to read something that somebody sent me the other day, and I really loved it. It was by John Lennon. And people know who John Lennon is, and people know who the Beatles are. And this kind of is me. When I was five years old, my mother always told me that happiness was the key to life. They at when I went to school, they asked me what I wanted to be when I grow up, and I wrote down happy. They told me I didn't understand the op the assignment, and I told them that they didn't understand life. <laughs> okay, and that was John Lennon, and I love that because that is something I've always kind of thought about in my life, okay? I want to be successful. I've had a very different background, and I'll tell you about it, but I always want to be happy, and women have to fight for that because there's a lot of challenges that come on you. You're a mother, you're a caregiver, but you've got to find that little thing that makes you happy. And this morning what it was for me was the strawberries are in, okay? I, was, I sat down this morning and made myself a nice breakfast, and then I ended it with some vanilla ice cream, chocolate chips, and strawberries. Now, I will be paying for that later, but it was excellent. Okay, so first of all, I'm no expert on, on women. Uh, but I was a psychology major in college, and it's kind of funny because I'm very observant about people's behavior, okay? So maybe that's why I went that route. Um, not only in my youth, I grew up in a town very similar to Malden, two family, three family homes. I'm a Polish and Irish background, so I had a Bobshi who was a Polish grandmother. She had eight children. She made pierogi, wonky, whatever. And then I had the Irish side of the family. So although I'm not of the same descent, yeah, I, we had the same issues going on. Very much in a city like um, Malden. Okay? Um, I was always encouraged to, to go forward. I had um, parents. My father was the first to be educated to go to college. So that was the generation that came. Um, I was lucky enough going to college. I came to Boston. I got really lucky. I worked at Northeastern University for a couple of years. And I had somebody push me to the co-op program. And I got to learn about engineering. And because of that, I was able to end up in a software company. I worked in a software company with all people from Harvard University and me <laughs> for about 20 years. So I was very lucky that people pushed me along. So I worked very much in a man's world, OK? And then towards the end of kind of after September 11th and times like that, times were changing, I left my job. And people thought I was crazy, OK? <laughs> and I came back to the community and got a job with Hallmark Health, OK? Took a big cut in pay, did a lot of things, but I wanted to be around to raise my daughter. So that's kind of what happened. So I've had a very interesting perspective seeing the corporate <coughs> world, okay, and kind of the nonprofit world. And let me tell you, the problems are the same, okay? They might look different when people have money and have a lot of facade out front, but everybody's trying to do the right thing. We use these, these things in the WIC office all the time. Women are women and mothers are mothers and don't get in our way when it comes to our children and raising our families, okay? So we are very strong, and I have been around a lot of strong women, and I'm going to talk about a few of them, okay? First one is a woman named Molly Fanning. Now, the Irish always had everybody was Mary, Margaret, Margaret, Mary, I don't know. So my aunt Molly, I'm not even sure if that was her name, was so fed bedridden with arthritis that I never, never saw her outside of her bed, okay? So she lived in a house with two other aunts, they never were married. The reason was they were around during World War II and a lot of their significant others were probably killed in the war. So they lived together, three aunts, Irish aunts, 
And my Aunt Molly was always in her bed. I never saw her outside of her bed. But do you want to know what? She was engaging. Every time I came to visit, she was talking about current events. She would read the newspaper with her hands this much in arthritis, and she would talk, you know, politics, current events, what's going on. So from her room, which she really didn't leave every time that I knew her, she lived to be almost 90 years old, she was engaged in life. So what I say to people all the time is be engaged, find something, pay attention, you know, read the paper, read something, know what's going on, have an opinion, it's okay to have an opinion, and it's okay to get educated by other people. I'm constantly asking questions about religion, politics. You learn from people, people will tell you what's going on. So ask some questions. So Molly Fanning was one of them. The second one is my grandmother, Joan Sienko. And it is so funny, because I'm looking over here, and I see this. And who knows what they call this woman from the World War II era? Does anybody know? No more games? Nope, it's called <laughs> Rosie the Riveter. They used to call this woman Rosie the Riveter. And these were the women from the World War II era who did everything they could during the war to keep the country going. My grandmother was of that generation. She worked, we always laugh, how many, how many jobs did Nana have? We have no idea. She worked in a factory. She worked here. She was a waitress. She did this. She did everything, even when she didn't need to do it. She lived to be 94 years old. The last 15 years of her life, she volunteered at the hospital every day, never got paid, and loved every second of it. Now, she lived to be 94 because she again was engaged. They used to say, Joan, why don't you take a job over here? We'll pay you. She said, well, then I'll have to show up. <laughs> I, I might not show up. It'd be a snowstorm, and I'd go, Nanny, you're not going to work tomorrow. Well, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> you know what I mean? So she was engaged. She worked. She gave back. She got so much from working at the hospital. She was a quiet lady, kind of private. She got so much from working there, she loved it. Again, engaged, learning, talking to people, helping people. So that's another person. But she was a Rosie the Riveter, and that's what they call those, those ladies. I was also lucky to have two parents, which in this society I see every day, and particularly in the WIC office, that that's really not the standard. I had two parents who encouraged me all the time, okay? And that was very lucky to have that. Uh, my mother was um, kind of a stay-at-home mom. My father was a principal. So we didn't have a ton of money, but we had a good family life. And we did things as a family, OK? And that's the thing I encourage. Whatever it is, it doesn't have to be something that costs a lot of money. It doesn't have to be you know, elaborate trips. It could be a trip down to the Wakefield Lake. Make it seem like a big ordeal. I remember when we were kids, we would go for rides on Sunday. We're going for a ride, a ride nowhere, right? We're going to get a little ice cream, a little something. But strong parents who were together. They are now 80 years old, and my brother and I constantly say we cannot come between them. They are a team, okay? <laughs> and if I'm dealing with one, I'm dealing with the other. And if I try to deal with one on the side, it ain't going to work out well for me. So I respect that they are a team, and they've been together for almost 60 years. Um, another person is Bill Burton, happens to be my husband. He's a good man. I chose well. <laughs> you know, try to pay attention when you're looking for a spouse. When you and work as a team. I say all the time at the WIC office when it, when you're married to somebody, it's you and that person against the world. Mothers are nice. Grandmothers are nice. Aunts with opinions are wonderful. But you have to be your husband and you as a team, and you have to be on the same line. Now sometimes you're not on the same line. When I left my corporate job, my husband was not on my same, he was not happy, <laughs> okay? But he finally realized why I was doing what I was doing. So sometimes you have to make a plan, you have to implement the plan, kind of move along the plan, give somebody a chance to get used to the idea of things. I'm sure you all know, <laughs> right? But that's how you keep harmony in your home, okay? And you respect the, the relationship. 
Okay? Where things go wrong, as we see in the office that I work in, when I'm you know, working in the WIC program, you have to be in it together. That's by experience. And then patience is one that is big, and that has to do with my daughter. <laughs> I love her dearly, but she is like a mother, a dreamer. Okay? And I have encouraged her to dream, but there's a cost to that. Okay? It's never easy. She didn't go to the mass and her. She's in school in California. Okay? When she has a problem, it becomes a bigger problem. But that's part of what I left out there for her. I wanted her to dream. I wanted her to try things. I wanted her to challenge herself. Okay? And I was taught that. And sometimes it's not the easier route. You know? It's not the easier way to go. It's much easier just to stay with the status quo. Um, yesterday, I happened to go to uh, a cousin of mine who actually had a rough start with life. She got pregnant at probably 19 years old, got married and divorced, and had some really tough times. But now she has a dance studio and she had a big competition yesterday. And I went and I was hanging out with my cousins, and they're very different than me. Their experience growing up is very different. But what I learned is it's never, never too late to change and get to where you're going to go. Can't give up on people, okay? Everybody is doing the best they can, okay? And sometimes, from your perspective, you go, why don't they just do this? Why don't they just do that? Sometimes there's something in them that can't allow them to do that. So two things that I've learned working particularly in corporate America and in, in, and in the WIC program. And I, we say it all the time. First one, 80% of the things we worry about, pine about, nervous, constantly thinking about, does not happen. Okay? All the worries, the worry, worry, worry that we have as women, are our kids going to be okay? Uh, da, 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 da. This, that, the other thing. Half the time, things work out. So I try to do that in those nights when I'm up, worrying what's going to happen that 80% of the time, things do work out, okay? Second thing is, there's always another path, okay? One of the cousins I was talking to yesterday actually had a cocaine problem, okay? So he had a drug problem, and he, he really had big problems. He's now 45 years old, he's got three children, and he told me yesterday that he said, you know what, Cher, he goes, I made $100,000 this year. He said, I made about 50000 of it in the last three weeks. Wow. Okay? So, so, but I'm saying, here's a guy, right, that you would have said, he's never going to, what's going to happen to him? You know what? No one, we didn't give up on him. He, we kept trying. He found a good woman to help him. He's got three children. He's a good father, and he's making a living. So, don't give up on people. And I know sometimes it's easy to make a judgment, to look at somebody and feel that way. Oh, they're not gonna, there's always hope. And there's always two paths, right? I didn't go to Harvard. I ended up in a Harvard-based company, okay? I always wondered how I ended up there because I, I went to the University of Rhode Island and I wasn't the smartest kid in the room. But sometimes life can help you. So my, my lesson is, Dream big, try things in your youth, okay, so that when you settle down, you're comfortable with being settled down. Try to pick a spouse that can help you, compliment you, as opposed to push you down, okay. My husband is very, um, lets me do what I want to do. Where if I was with somebody who didn't do that, that wouldn't be so good, you know. I need somebody who lets me. And I let him do things. Two people go, Wait, I, I've never seen your husband. Where is he? he you know, he's actually working today because he's a CPA. He works straight from about uh, January 30th to about April 15th. So I might see him sometime in May. 